Hello there friends, this is Dr. Mintz. Here is a case of a relatively elderly individual who presented with severe abdominal pain and hypotension. Okay, so we're going down here. You're seeing things looking a little bit abnormal. I'll let you just get an overview. of everything here. Maybe you've seen a little abnormality already. I suspect so. Alright, let's look at it here again. So here we are coming through the upper abdomen. Here's a diaphragm. This is the right hemidiaphragm and often it wraps around the liver more tightly in this area but in this case we have something called colonic interposition so the colon instead of having its flexure medial to the liver has its flexure lateral to it this is pretty uncommon very uncommon here so ordinarily Again, this is the diaphragm is lying right here. And then as you go down, you still see it here. And if you go down sufficiently far, here you can see the whole contour of the diaphragm. Okay, and then it just starts opening up to the peritoneal cavity here. So going up, that's the unusual variation here. You have a the hepatic flexure lateral to the liver. Very, very uncommon. And here's the gallbladder. And here's the pancreas. One thing about the pancreas is that it's always closely related to the splenic artery, but particularly closely related to the splenic vein. The splenic vein goes, of course, to the spleen. And while the artery, which is not constricted by a lot of firm, soft tissue around it, becomes very tortuous with time very often, the splenic vein takes a straight shot into the splenic hilum. And this person has a relatively small splenic vein. But generally, you can look for the splenic vein to find the spleen. And you can also look for the splenic vein to find the pancreas because the pancreas lies right along the splenic vein. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Now we're in the upper abdomen. Here you see the aorta. These is, are the crura. The plural of crus of a diaphragm is crura. So these are the crura, the right crus and left crus of the diaphragm represent the crura. And if we go up higher, you'll see that each of them here going down, right and left crura. As you go up, you find that this one here is, is starting to arch up. Okay, now you can see that it is the diaphragm and it's going up over the stomach here. Okay, so diaphragms, very important. Now this little baby here that is my favorite, favorite little vein of all time. That is the azagous vein. It's a very, very interesting vein. Okay, so let's go down here just so you can see. Aorta? Aorta. Now, aorta is retroperitoneal. Important concept which you will hear about. It is retroperitoneal. So there are retroperitoneal structures like the pancreas and the adrenal glands, and then there are intraperitoneal structures, like bowel, portions of bowel, including most of small bowel and the transverse colon. That means they're wrapped around with peritoneum, and that's what allows them a certain mobility 
in the abdomen. And as we go down here, we see this disaster. What do we have here? Let's go up. It looks like it's vascular. Here's the aorta. Follow the aorta down. Down, down, down here. And it doesn't connect here yet. There's the left renal artery. And all of a sudden, boom. This little aorta is now communicating with this huge aneurysm, or probably a pseudoaneurysm, because it's not the actual native original lining of the aorta. So when something develops like this slowly over time, it's an enlarging aorta with an aortic wall. This appears to have been probably a smaller aneurysm in this area that just broke open and extravasated, meaning bled out all of this blood. Now when we see this contrast, when you see it in the aorta, you say, well, there's contrast enhancement of the aorta. But what you have to realize is that means all of the blood in the aorta is dense because it contains the iodinated contrast. So if it explodes or starts leaking like this, what you'll see is contrast leaking out of the aorta, which means bleeding. So if you have active bleeding from the aorta, you see what we call contrast extravasation or, or contrast opacification of adjacent structures, or all of which is really just an indirect way of saying active bleeding. Now here again you can see how this is pushing the structures of the retroperitoneal away from this very large expansile ruptured aneurysm. Here you can see what looks like probably the native lumen defined by these intimal calcifications. So that is how it ruptured somewhere in that area and this is all pseudoaneurysm or mostly it looks like it erupted into this big hematoma and that is now dissecting into different areas of the retroperitoneum. Retroperitoneum, very, very important plane and anatomic separator, if you will, that we will discuss. So here's the kidneys, right and left kidney, and they are both retroperitoneal also. But look at how this, all of the stranding, what is that? Now think about it. Patient had severe abdominal pain, became hypotensive, came to the hospital and got this scan. We injected him and got the scan. So what is all this non-dense stuff out here? What would that be? This soft tissue density that's not contrast enhanced. What would that be? Well, we know that this is blood. This enhanced material here is blood and you can see it goes right here just like this stuff is going there. And some of it goes over here, just like this area of whatever that is, soft tissue is there. And then you have this more securely positioned big hematoma, and a portion of it is enhancing, and a portion is not. Well, these are both the same thing. This is blood, and this is blood. This is the blood that accumulated before he got a CT scan when there was no IV contrast on board. And this is the blood that leaked out of the aorta after IV contrast was given. And all of these areas here, here for example, retroperitoneal planes that we will discuss at some point, <coughs> all of this is blood. Here's blood here too. All that strandy, stringy looking stuff here and there, that's all blood. So there's been a lot of blood loss here. The kidneys, you can see, are not enhancing well. They're compromised quite a bit. The blood pressure seems very low, and one thing, you can t one way you can tell that is this aorta, see how it's kind of narrowed side to side? Normally, aorta is under enough pressure that it will fill out and be taut kind of tight under uniform pressure all the way around. To have an aorta that is this kind of elliptical, kind of oval, means that there's not enough pressure to fully distend 
that lumen. And there's more evidence of this patient being hypotensive. Here you can see even this has a, a kind of oval appearance. It's not nice and round, and if you start looking, you'll see that pretty much all of the aortas you see will have this kind of very clearly, sharply delineated round appearance. Now if we go up more superiorly, go through this opening for the aorta called the aortic hiatus, suddenly the aorta is right next to the esophagus. You see the esophagus go through the esophageal hiatus, which is a gap in the diaphragm. You can see this diaphragm here and this one here kind of leaving a little bit of an opening right here for the stomach to go up to the, the esophagus or vice versa. Okay, let's see what we find here. What do we have here? It's the heart. This heart does not look good. That left ventricle or that right ventricle, and here's the left ventricle, they both look small, and for an elderly person, they're, they're going to have a bigger heart than this. So it can't even fill up the heart adequately. This is a tiny right ventricle that's just collapsed down because of an inadequate volume of blood in the body, and that's why bleeding leads to hypotension and eventually to death if it's not stopped. Okay, just some nice little pointers, an interesting case. See you soon.